Hi, welcome to friends. I'm no longer friends with YouTube as well as bonus episode. I am here with a very dear friend and a longtime friend, um, Jeffrey John Smith. And Jeffrey John Smith happened to um, be, we worked creatively. We were creative partners for four years working on a YouTube series called It's You. And you can still find it online. Um, it's called, uh, it's under like the website is It's You, a new web series. So and it's also up on um, Twisted Mirror as a as a series you can watch on on Twisted Mirror's platform. I'll put that in the show notes. So Jeffrey, thank you so much for being here. I'm so My here. pleasure. My pleasure. And we're here to talk about Patsy Rodenberg's creation called the Second Circle. She created this concept called the Second Circle, and it's freaking amazing. You want to hear her describe what it's about? Look in the show notes as well, and I'm going to just put up her fabulous book. So second circle, there's three circles that she that she has. These are concepts and it's about energy circles. And I'm going to describe what the first circle is. We'll, we'll just the first circle is like falling into yourself lives in the past. Nothing at it, stake really outside of anything you want to add to that. It, it's introspective. Thank you. Third circle, third, third circle is um, it's a bit, it, it's, it's energized, but it's controlling and it lives in the future. Anything you want to add to that, Jeffrey? Um, I was thinking it's like when you're lecturing students or talking to a group, you're in third circle. Yes. Because you get, you're giving everything and they're receiving it. There you go. Thank you. And then second circle is the circle of intimacy and of back and forth and present moment. What, how would you, what would you add to that? Um, I would add that that's the essence of true friendship. <gasps> you took it home. You took it home. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I went from third circle in my reaction to second circle. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Here's what I propose. I think second circle happens when a lot of times we, when we fall in love with a friend, we, it's because we've hit second circle with them. I, I think, I think, what do you think? How do you think, how has second circle shown up for you with friendships, Jeffrey? It's happened spontaneously, I think. And over time, but the key for me has always been some kind of shared experience like college or theater or making a movie or something like that where you work on something together mm -hmm. and it creates an even playing field where the possibility mm -hmm. of becoming intimate friends exists but without that if you meet somebody cold at a party, I think it's harder to, to get to that place. I'm not saying it can't happen, mm -hmm. but I find shared work to be a, a doorway to, to close friendship. Oh my God, that's true. Cause it really brought you and me to, I mean, you and I were friends before that, but it really brought us together as friends. Yes. It, it brought intimacy. It did. Now, yeah. here, here's another idea that I was going to, I've been thinking about, and that is if we define second circle as, as a kind of synergistic, mutual flow of energy between two people, and honesty has to be part of it, but is there a point in friendships that last where both parties consciously cultivate that relationship, that intimacy, maybe they set guidelines, maybe they set boundaries, maybe they have ways to settle disagreements or uh, so on and so forth. And I keep thinking about the agreement we had with each other before we made the web series and consciously said, okay, we're friends, but now we're going to be working together. And it's yes. show business. Yes, and you and you and you had already known of a, a a close friend of mine who I had a falling out with. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So you so yeah. you were with me during a fin- a major friendship breakup. So you right. you knew these were the, it was it was living between us. It that was this possibility existed. Yes. It was. And so I think we we in a way drew up a contract that protected our friendship and at the same time allowed us to work together and not hold secret stretches, problems, but um, immediately talk about them. So I guess the thing I wanted to bring up and hear what you think is how do friendships thrive if there's a conscious effort on the part of both people to maintain it? Or can you just maintain it by kind of leaving it alone and letting it happen spontaneously? Do you need cultivation, conscious cultivation to maintain a friendship? That's a great question. I, I I, I, I'm going to bring the question right back to you because I know you have thoughts, you know, I'm sure you have thoughts on this. I feel for me, because of who I am and where I come from in this, just where I come from, uh, which I think is not just my family of origin, I believe in past lives. So, so my, my whole history of myself and probably few, and I think going into the future of my future self, I am particular. And so I have to tell people who I get close to, this is me. And this hurts my feelings. Yeah. And how do we talk about this so that it's not catered to me so that both of, so we, how do we get into, I mean, I think I have to have a conversation about a second circle conversation of how do we get into second circle? Well, I have friendships from college still. Um, three of them. Now we're talking 50 years on. So a couple of them have not required me necessarily to do conscious kind of, to draw up a kind of contract, a friendship contract. And, um, and that's fine. But I find periodically, <clears throat> if you don't have at least an unspoken agreement about where the lines are. Sometimes you have to take drastic effort to balance that friendship. You know, if if things are happening in it that make you uncomfortable or unhappy, you have to find a way to talk about them and not, um, not make the whole friendship vulnerable to collapse. Yeah. It depends on how much you want to keep it. I mean, I think that, yeah. yeah. So what happens, I'm throwing, I'm just throwing things out. Yeah. What happens when a second circle relationship strays into third circle? Well, hopefully you can, uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is, uh, you know, and I'm sure I can go on to third circle with people. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I know, I'm pretty good at it, I think. I think we, t- I, we teach. Yes, yes. I think it's a, there, someone has to be aware of it and take the time to courageously tap the other on the back and say, we need to talk. Or on the front, like just say, hey, yeah. raise hand, we no, need no. to talk. I'm here, I'm here, I'm a person. Yeah. You yeah. can talk to me. Yeah, yeah. We've had that a lot in our friendship, Do you know, where I, I remember. We were one time accountability partners one summer and and I just got on, I got into third circle, <laughs> got into third circle with you and you just kind of, I could just see, I, 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 it, you went someplace emotionally that I was like- I, I did, just, when yeah. did that happen? What was that? What was that? That was, we were supposed to be writing. We were both writing. I was writing my memoir about friends I'm no longer friends with and you were doing a, your blog. And I just, I started getting punitive. I, I started throwing shoulds at you. You and did? You, I did. I did. And I you, must have and, and it. I, that's interesting because I think I, I just noticed your behavior. And because I'm pretty aware of behavior, I think I'm, I'm, I'm probably quite good at it. Although I have my missteps. I was like, what's going on here? And you were like, I, I, I don't know. And I said, oh my God, oh my God. I totally misstepped. I totally misstepped. I just was wow. punitive. And you were like, thank you. Thank you. 
I I have no memory of this. I maybe, remember it. I remember. It. Maybe I'm I'm selectively. Maybe that's how I stay in second circle with people. I selectively forget yeah. um, missteps or something. I don't know. I think sometimes people can go to second circle with you, and it actually is just a one time gig. It's a one time gig, and it's not meant to be friends. And and I always get sad by that. But you know what? I think it's time for me to say, you know what, that's okay. It lived there. And I'm so glad I got that second circle with that person. And that was our closeness. And that is it. Um, how about you, Jeffrey? Um, I have a dear friend who, this is boy tangential, and I'll try to put it together. And you'll have to edit this um, profusely. <laughs> but we used to do these parties every year, once a year in January. And it was the Fred and Ginger party. And this was where uh, this particular group of friends got together and made these particular dishes like cassoulet with goose and watched Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movies. So I had it at my house once and I had a giant cardboard cutout life size of Fred Astaire. And one of the guests arrived and looked at it and said, oh, Oh, and just felt and was so sad. And I, I, she said, um, I said, why are you upset? She goes, he doesn't look like that anymore. And immediately in my head, I thought, but he did once. Mm -hmm. And what more can we ask for in life than having something bloom? And then we move on if it doesn't stay with us. The, so it's this idea of allowing yourself to let go of something and not demanding that things stay the same forever. Oh my God, that is like, you took me to the church of second circle. The that's, church. That's the church of second circle. Thank you. so. And Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire, I think they were in second circle when they danced. They, they were as as artists collaborating right. they were in second circle yes. they did not have a lot of socializing outside of that it was yeah. their work that's it. where they were intimate and that's, that's what it. you see on screen yeah. you know and that's it how do we not for i think that's it sometimes we f i'll just speak for myself i force p i want to force someone into which is third circle to be let's go into, <laughs> let's go into second circle because we went there before and they're like i, I don't want to fucking go to second circle. i don't want to go back it, it was there for two minutes and now it's gone and you're like okay cool. it's like a shipboard thing or or when you've done theater with people you can become extremely intimate That's in the it. process of doing a play together yes but it doesn't necessarily carry over into life it's true and how do i think we're not a culture well, am I going to take this out? I was not taught how to let go. We are taught how to consume. None of it's are. Uh, and this and this podcast is uh, how do we start enjoying? Really, and I'm 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 talking to myself here. How do we start enjoying and finding finding the joy in letting go? Because I think there could be. It maybe it's probably bittersweet. But where do we find the sweetness in the letting go? Well, that's part of mourning too. When you, when someone dies who's close to you, all of these questions become uh, survival questions, totally. not just philosophical. It, it's real. Shit got real. Shit got real. You know. You know. I know. You do know. I know. Yeah. Um. All right. Honey. Thank you so much. My heart.